So we're going to look at two types of stereoisomerism for transition metal complexes. The first one is cis-trans isomerism. The second one will be optical isomerism. Cis-trans is relatively straightforward. So cis-trans, and we kind of looked at complexes where this could happen, is you've got to look for the following formula. Look for formulae which have, uh, well, uh, these. So, if you've got, um, let's have a think about square planar. So if you have a square planar complex which has the formula M for any old metal, and then if I'm just going to put A2, B2, so A and B are both monodentate ligands. So if I put this kind of formula <coughs> going on, I'll do an example. So EG, PT, NH3 twice, CL twice. So if I got that kind of complex and it's square <coughs> planar, as we kind of thought could happen, if I do my wedges, and my dashes. So A and B for both. So I've got two ligands of type A and two ligands of type B. <coughs> so I could have this kind of arrangement <coughs> where the chlorides are next to each other and the ammonias are next to each other. Or Again, phase bonds, you can have the arrangement where now the ammonias are opposite each other and the chlorides opposite each other. This one is going to be the, is that going to be cis or trans? Cis. Cis, because they're next to each other, they're on the same side and that one is trans, they are opposite each other. So that happens in square planar complexes. Only if I had a tetrahedral arrangement, it wouldn't matter. It so you'd have to work out that it's square planar. Square planar. Yeah, you'd be t yeah, this one you need to know. So this is an example that you need to know. Um, I did it wrong. Okay, do it again. So the other one to look for is octahedral uh, complexes. So uh, if you've got monodentate ligands, so if you had this arrangement, M with say four A's and two B's, like that, um, you can arrange them um, with the B's opposite each other, next to each other. So if I just sketch it out, so you would have, you could have this arrangement with the two, yeah, if you want to draw it, with the two B's oh. opposite each other. Like so. Or you could have it with the two Bs next to each other. Uh, sorry, could I have? Uh, what had somebody else said? Yeah. Um, then I don't think, uh, I don't think you've got stereo isomerism, have you? Because then you'd have it on the same one as well. If you had three Bs. No, I mean, if you had two Bs. Yeah. But there was only one A in between them. It would be A, B, A, A, A. Yeah, yeah. You can get this one, I've got it. Which is B, A. So that B, A, B. So B would be. On the third one. Yeah. That one. Yeah, yeah, B, B. 
and then but not there. Yeah. So it would be but a that top. would be that one. <laughs> no, 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 that's, no. That's where the beads are right. But if you want a top, top and then one two third down. So I have yeah. 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 that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the bottom one would be an eight. Yeah, on the right. Oh, yeah. 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 That's the same as that, isn't it? No, that's all the beads on the Oh, oh, I see what you mean. Oh, no, I, no, that is that one. But you just rotated it around. You guys think about it, 3D. Yeah, you just rotated it around to it's now. Okay, oh, yeah. all women. Um, um, yeah, where should I be? Yeah, that's what I mean. It doesn't matter. <laughs> so this one is going to be the... Is it? Trans, because they're opposite each other. This one is going to be the... Cis. Cis. Cis, because they are next to each other. So we're going to now do an example of cis trans <coughs> from octahedral <coughs> complex. Because you do need to know examples. Because sometimes in a question they'll ask you, describe stereoisomerism in transition metal complexes using relevant examples. So you actually have to be able to tell them proper examples. The key mistake that people make is they make up complex ions, just like random metals and ligands, like no tomorrow. They don't like that. So let's do this. So we're going to put cobalt in the middle, and then we draw our um, bonds. That's the key thing, so that we can show the stereo isomerism. Then remember we put arrows on the end of each bond, and lone pairs on the end as well, because that's ticking all those points. And then we put my ligands. I've got four ammonias and two chlorides. So the first <coughs> one I'll do is put the chlorides opposite each other. When you're drawing ammonia, notice that the lone pair I'm always making sure is on my nitrogen, so it's really close. Put him in square brackets, right, so which one is he? Is he cis or trans? He's trans, why is he trans? Because they're the opposite side. Yeah, because my chlorides are opposite each other, so he would be trans. So let's do cis. Again, bonds like so, arrows on the end, bone pairs, and now I'm just going to put the chloride next to each other, like so. And then do you have, do we put a plus on the outside of the bracket? Yes, yeah. and brackets plus, like so. And this one is cis. So now you've got an example of a square planar showing cis trans isomerism and an example of an octahedral complex showing cis trans isomerism. Right, so the next one is a different type of stereoisomerism. We've done cis trans. What's another type of stereoisomerism? Optical. Optical, right, so let's do optical. For optical, you could work with having, um, <coughs> if you've got three bidentate ligands, but also it will work if you've got two bidentate, two monodentate? Yeah, and two monodentate ligands, but only the... Is that separate, two monodentate ligands, or two with the two bidentate? Two bidentate plus two monodentate ligands but only the cis isomer. If I've got those, either that combination or that combination, I see optical isomerism. So I'm going to do it for a cobalt complex. Right, so I'm going to put cobalt in the middle, and I'm going to use the EN ligand, which we said was that guy there, one, two, diamino, ethane. Mm -hmm. Okay, so first of all, we'll do our bonds. Okay, now let's do our arrows, and we'll do our lone pairs. And then just put a nitrogen on 
at the end of every lone pair. Doesn't matter which way you do it, but it may be easier if you do it the same way as me. I'm going to link up him and him, him and him, and him and there. So I've simplified it by just drawing a, a line rather than the duh, duh, duh. If you want to do it, and I'm just going to put my H's on as well. Is there a chance I will do that? There will be, yeah. It will actually be <coughs> 3 plus, like so. So it's not over. Right, okay. <laughs> I'm going to draw the other optical isomer. Do it exactly the same way as we started by doing your bonds. Like so, your dashes, edges, arrows, Wait. low pairs, nitrogens. So get that basic structure first. <coughs> Once you've got that basic structure, let's reflect it. So this is going to go that side like so, because it's the opposite end, and then it's quite easy. That one goes to the back one, like so, and then these two link up, like so. Okay, and then put your eight on. But to the opposite to the other one, whatever the other one is. Yeah, it's the mirror image. There we go, square brackets, three plus, like so. Right, what we're going to try and do, now don't worry about this, but I'll try and, yeah. I'm going to rotate, I wouldn't draw this because it's made confused. Okay. I'm going to rotate this one around so you can see it's different to that one. Okay, so if I rotate that one around, this bit would go that side, yeah? Okay, then... This one is then going to come out and would be attached <coughs> to the front one. And then this one will be attached to the back one. I know that's an F diagram. But can you see it's the opposite to how this one? Yeah. 